So in this demo, I'm going to be going over just a very basic process of painting inside of Photoshop. And this is a process that I've used over and over again for my own personal work, for concept work and sketching. It applies to pretty much any, any type of painting I do digitally, even if I'm using Procreate. But for today, we're going to be focusing on using the tools inside of Photoshop to paint. So to do a demonstration, uh, I'm going to show some of the basic tools like the marquee tool here up in the toolbar. I use this quite a bit to create uniform shapes, especially for ellipses. And in this case, I'm going to be using it for the silhouetted shape of a sphere. So as you can see there, I created a perfect sphere by using this marquee tool here. So if I deselect it again by hitting Control D, I'll go back to my marquee tool. And as you can see, I have the ability to drag and contort this shape to an ellipse. Or I can hold down Shift, and that gives me a perfect uniform shape for a circle which I'll then turn into a sphere here in a second. All right, so this is the shape that I'm gonna be painting inside of, and I just wanna create a mid-tone that's solid, some solid shape uh, group of pixels that I can paint on top of. So I hit G on my keyboard, that's my shortcut for the paint bucket tool. I'll be using this just to fill in that shape. I'll hit Control D again to deselect. And now by creating another layer, I'm going to be creating what's called a clipping mask. So what this does is this allows you to only paint on top of the layer that's affecting the pixels below it. So you see here, I'm painting across the entire canvas, but in this case, it's only affecting the pixels inside of that, that circle. So to do a clipping mask, you go in between two layers and you hold or you hit Alt. And as you can see, without the clipping mask, those marks are still existing outside of the shape. But once I create that clipping mask, they're conforming to that shape. So let's try this again. And I'll be using a soft brush to create the illusion of form. You'll see how quick you can create forms by just using the simple method of clipping masks, lasso tools, marquee tools, and a few brushes. So if we're thinking about the laws of light, we're going to have a light source and we're going to have shadow. So I'm going to establish that here. I'm going to pick a color or a value that's a little bit lighter than my midtone, but not pure white because I don't want to paint in highlights yet. So by using a big soft brush, I'm just going to drag and model this form. One thing I'll do as well is I'll go to my background layer and actually want to make this a little bit darker. That's so we can see what we're actually working on here. That contrast is going to help us a bit. So let's model this form out a little bit more. So we have a light source in the top right and our shadows are on the inverse side of that. So one thing I can do is I can create another layer underneath, underneath this clipping mask that already exists. I'll create a layer right here and I'll be painting on this with my shadow. So I'm going a little bit darker here. And for my core shadow, I'm gonna go a little bit darker. So I'm gonna use the same brush and select my eraser tool. And I'm gonna model this out on the light side by erasing it and making that a little bit more believable. And I'll go back and forth with this process when I'm just modeling out the basic forms. So now if we wanted to add some texture, here's where we can get a little bit more complicated. So um, in my own brush pack, my gouache brush pack, I have a couple of different brushes that focus more on texture. Um, some are focused more on shape, but I have these ones that are pretty good at emulating some texture. So I'm gonna pick out this brush here and I have a new layer, clipping mask that. And I'm gonna pick one of the tones that exists here in the core shadow. So light goes to the dark. 
what I want to do is I just want to lightly glaze in some of the texture I have here. And I'm actually going to change this to multiply. And what this does is it just allows the dark values to go through. I can reduce that a little bit there. And by using a mask within this clipping mask, I can use the values of black and white to either add or subtract some of these shapes that exist here. Some of these textural shapes that I don't want. I can add and remove them. I can switch back to white to add back some of that texture in areas I might want it. But I think that some of the best paintings only have texture inside of this area where, where the light meets the dark. So I'm just going to focus my texture in this area. So now we're getting a little bit more complicated and I'm going to be using another layer with a clipping mask and using color dodge and a soft brush. What we'll do is we'll create some highlights and glowing bits on our sphere. So potentially where a highlight would be, I'll start blasting in some more lighter tones. And what that does is it just brings out that form a little bit more. And then by using a layer without a clipping mask, I'll just go on the edge here of this sphere. And I need to go back to color dodge using a light value. Just glazing on the outside of this. It gives us a sense that this has some luminosity and potentially even an atmosphere. So one thing to make your, your pieces kind of pop out a little bit more is by creating some contrast. No matter what your subject is, it's always good to consider light and dark values and how things look from a distance. If we look at the sphere right now, some of these values are blending into each other and that's fine, but I do want the object to pop out a little bit more. So again, using a soft brush and a darker value than what we have in the background, I'm just going to paint in some of this darker shadow, darker value. And that just helps to pop out that form just a little bit more. We can go back to our color dodge layer where that glowy luminosity is. And we could push that even further. So another thing I'd like to kind of end this on is using what's called mixer brushes. So these kind of act like a smudge brush, but they interact pretty well where you can change these values to make it feel like oil paint, watercolor. And what it does is it'll move around these pixels and it'll blend them in really well. So you can get some soft edges and some sharp edges. And having that variation is really nice when you're going for an aesthetic quality for your painting. So right now I have another layer right here and I have this checked. It's called sample all layers. And you want that to act on just this layer, but what it does is it samples all these layers like they're merged. So um, if you don't have that checked, you're gonna get some weird artifacting. And if you're wondering why, just click that. So I want to make some of these areas a little bit more soft. Kind of vanish into the background just a little bit. Using a soft brush. I'm just massaging this edge right here. And also around these edges as well. So I went a little too far there. So it's not a dramatic difference, but if we look here, it kind of allows our eyes to pass through this object a little bit easier on these edges. Compositionally, I think it works better than this. 
And if we want to, we can keep playing with this a little bit with a soft brush using our mixer brush. We can soften some of these edges here. Make it very subtle. So as you can see, just using some very, very simple tools inside of Photoshop, just using a marquee tool. Um, we didn't even touch the lasso tool, but you can do the same thing with the lasso tool by creating distinct shapes and then painting values on top of them. But by using marquee tools, selection tools, clipping masks, and basic brushes, you can get a, a pretty convincing result. So I hope this helps.